You're listening to Happy Hour with Joby and Curtis. <laughs> Welcome back to Happy Hour with Joby and Curtis. Hey, look, I did that. And if you want to follow us anywhere, you can always use hashtag <laughs> JC Happy Hour or <laughs> WWJCD, right? Well, in all fairness, to anyone listening to this as their first episode, <laughs> you can't always <laughs> find us on <laughs> JC Happy Hour because it's brand new. No, you can. But you can go back and follow Happy Hour JC. You may not like what you find, yeah. but you could find <laughs> <laughs> but you could, you could <laughs> definitely go. You know, a really safe option is to go to iTunes and just subscribe to the podcast. That, yeah, and then you'd find out every, 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 anything you needed to know. Yeah. We're back here uh, with uh, Stephen Gertman from Ascendant Spirits. Uh, find all of about Ascendant Spirits at ascendantspirits.com. Uh, you know, all this, the social media stuff. But then also just, um, you know, as you're looking through there, you can find out where they're at, 20 states, uh, and growing. So that you can find Breaker Bourbon, certainly in 20 different states. And some of the other things that are coming out that we've talked about in the last episode. Yeah, we're the lineup be is growing, about. so you want to keep track of them. Yeah, definitely. Um, for just your regular old sipping or for cocktail mixing. I mean, you really want to have these things in your cabinet for one or the other purpose. And Curtis, you are an excellent co-host because you always serve things up on a platter. Cocktails, Stephen, we're coming back in from our last segment with a fun little concoction, a mix that you threw together. Talk to me about what we have in our glass right now. I, I, I wish I had like better tools than a straw <laughs> that's way too big for doing that. But It was um, it was the, the, the scientific pipette, black so straw. Right, except that, that <laughs> one's so fat you can't get the, right. the pressure. Um, <laughs> but uh, basically, as I, as I touched on um, in the last segment we did, um, it's a combination of the pink lightning, the strawberry moonshine, and Ventura limoncello. Uh, it sort of makes a boozy strawberry lemonade. Um, so the ratios might not be perfect in this, but you get an idea of how fun we can. Usually I would dilute it with a little bit of ice in the glass sure, as well. Sure, no, this, uh, this is definitely a great um, a great first taste and a an intrigue to what the cocktail or the mix could be with a proper proportion. I could see, like you said, uh, see this over ice with a little bit of mint, and it's a summer cocktail. And a summer cocktail made it strictly booze. Yeah, I, I think maybe even um, just a, a little can a little bis- bit of candied uh, orange peel. Oh, sure. Boom. A little yeah. garnish right there. I, I so you talked about limoncello. So Ventura limoncello, uh, based here obviously in Ventura. Um, James has been on the show um, a bunch of times. James is uh, a huge advocate for distillery uh, dis- uh, uh, rights. Uh, basically, he wants the yeah. states to play by the ru- same rules for everyone, it being wineries. <laughs> Versus distilleries, breweries, versus breweries, right, and and distilleries are at a distinct disadvantage, or at least they were, and things are, they still are. <laughs> so he's, he's he's pushing it in that direction. Steven's to where got a devious grin on his face. Well, you know, because you can go to a brewery and you can order up a taster. You can go to a winery, you can order up a taster. You can go to a distillery and then you can, can sit there on your it. thumb and say, "I would like to taste this," and then they say, "Go to the grocery store and go buy your own, well, and then go back home." And I think what. Stephen, we're de- trust me, we're going to let you jump in. We apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to what Curtis is saying, we are now at the point where you can go into the distillery and you can order up a taster. You cannot buy what you love and walk away with it like you can at a winery or a brewery. Correct. Correct. And you could, um, in distilleries in California, uh, you could do tastings uh, prior to that, but we had to give the booze away. We couldn't charge you in for it. So it was pretty painful to have people come in and just drink a whole lot of free booze. Yeah, um, which is basically the state saying, hey, thanks for all your hard work. Now, just be gracious with it. <laughs> right. yeah, and g- and give, <laughs> give us our tax money for yeah. that pay stuff. Pay that us to give away free booze. Right. And really the, you know, because James and I are both um, on the board of the California Artists and Distillers Guild, and uh, we're really looking for parity um, with wineries and with breweries. And really the way that uh, we want everyone to, to really think about it, to sort of reframe it in their mind, is you as a consumer are having your rights tread upon. The fact that you can't choose to buy it from me, um, that you can only buy it through certain other places, really is a uh, is an unfair limitation uh, mm-hmm. that the state is you know throttling you guys with. And I love that perspective because on one hand, you know, if you want to be devil's advocate, you're saying, well, that's a, it's kind of a manipulative way of getting your way as a distiller, right? Saying, hey, I want to be able to sell my product, but it makes total sense as a consumer. Like, wait a minute, I just tasted this guy's hard work. I love this product. 
why can't I take it with me? That doesn't make any sense. And I, I think getting the consumer on your side and to really fight for that cause is going to be a strong and powerful movement. I think it, I, I, I liken it to you as, a, it say, a stake through the heart of the the farm to table kind of movement where mm -hmm. I I want to to go to your place I want to support you and I want to and 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 get a, a, a discount because you're cutting out the middle person transportation costs and all of this too but it's you know I'm at your place and and it's this whole idea of making a connection with you whereas if I have to go to the, the local supermarket or to a state-owned liquor store then you know, where is my connection well, to you? And at the risk of taking this conversation <laughs> <laughs> far down a, a rabbit hole and tunnel, state owned that phrase, woo, that phrase right there says a lot to me. You know, it really comes down to the revenue stream and who wants their cut, you know, pun intended when we talk about cutting heads and tails. And it's about how does the state one regulate the, f the flow of the booze. And I think that harkens back to years of prohibition and, and decades ago of monitoring the source of the product, but also how do they get their, their cut? How do they get their little piece of the pie? Right, and we, we really strongly want everyone to get their, their fair share. We're not trying to cut anyone out of the, out of the mix here, uh, but we think it does a lot to grow the brands, especially here in California. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, internally, and I'd like to you know, have more, uh, more people express it out there, we would love it if we were as forward thinking as Utah. <laughs> Where <laughs> in Utah you can <laughs> you can ski into a James Beard nominated distillery and gastro pub, a drink at their bar and ski out with a bottle that they produce there. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, that vision right there, that picture that he just painted right. should be everywhere. And I I like that you say we don't want to cut anyone out cuz I I think if you're able to taste the product in the distillery say I love it and directly thank the person who helped make it and walk out with a bottle, the more people that do that, the more money's gonna flow anyway. Absolutely, and people don't usually buy their second, third, fourth, fifth, et cetera bottle at the distillery. They get that first bottle from when they first try something. Sure, it's and a catalyst. Let's, and let's face it, people are lazy. <laughs> and they're not going to come all the way back to the distillery to buy every single bottle. But if right. they can't get I it there and they have to remember to stop by the grocery store on the way home, they may forget then as well. well so you're kind of damned if well you do and damned if you don't. And then you're going to Trader Joe's, which Trader Joe's isn't carrying everything. And so then you just go, okay, right. then I'm just going to pick so up Tito's. Or bottom line is so. we need we need the <laughs> officials and the regulators <laughs> to say, this makes sense. Let's taste it and buy it and go home with it. Right. Exactly. And then, the you know, um, that first bottle uh, – comes through us, and then every subsequent bottle hopefully comes through our great retail partners mm -hmm. and uh, and through the distribution channels. And in the words of wisdom from Mr. Sheen, winning. Do you have a club? Uh, well, because we cannot do any direct sales, there is really no, no point club. in us having a, a club either. We've got some great apparel. Right. Well, yes, that. No, I mean but, but I you know what? It may have come off condescending, but no, seriously, like. Another great way in the interim, the short term, to support your favorite distillery is to get some swag and say, I want this brand, recognize this brand. I, I think we actually did ourselves one disservice. Um, I'm not going to ask you to like touch me right now, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, we, we have these very high quality t-shirts and there's been a lot of ladies who come who, uh, who buy t-shirts and they go, oh, this is so soft. I'm going to sleep in this. I'm like, no. No, wear it out. <laughs> wear it out. Advertise for me. But, Can uh, we segue? Uh, you need well, – well, one of the things I'd like to, to touch on and when you talked about parity before we head out is uh, – so refined dil distillery. So we've got a winery who's making – who's distilling their, their grape juice, okay? And so then they're able to uh, – have a club and sell their stuff. They can sell their their alcohol, uh, their distilled spirits yep. in their room, at, uh, in their tasting room as brandies and things. And this is kind of what we're talking about. There, there's no difference. You know, it's called botanical brandy, but it's gin, and it's, it's an called and it's called area. and it's called neutral brandy, but it's vodka. And we love them. Just shout out. Real well, quick. no, absolutely, <laughs> and, and I love their 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 products. But talking about the parody where you cannot run a, a club where you're sending things out to them and because there's this gray area of a winery that is 
distilling their their grape juice that they're able to and so that that's kind of what w the, ho the whole thing is just leveling this playing field let us do let us sell this and right there, there was a lot more uh, exemptions for brandy because it is a great based product and california has been so forward on the wine front uh, but that i mean we're often using uh, just as much or more california agricultural products in other spirits like our strawberries, strawberries. like our limes mm -hmm. that we've talked about um, which we're using, you know, by the by the tons, just like people use grapes. So yeah. it makes a, a lot of sense throughout the ec economic stream to allow this to happen. You know, buying the product after you've tasted it right there in the distillery, you guys might as well just be John Macro and serving right up to me. You know, <laughs> because my one segue is I want to ask about the graphic, the brand itself, the three mountain peaks, and what that means, but also the brandy aspect. You've got some new product coming. So before we get too far. Ascendant Spirits and your visual brand, what's the significance of the Three Peaks? Uh, the Three Peaks, uh, the, the sort of mountain logo was, uh, you're trying to be, one, one thing is you're trying to be clever with the, with the A, um, as you can see on the, on the wallpaper, uh, where we made the, the large mountain into an A, even though we get some people going, what's Ascendant Spirits? <laughs> um, like, well, there's an A right no, there. It's in there. Um, even though then they look and they, you know, will write in A, S, C, E, N, D. Anyway, um, but we're uh, ascendant has that nature of being on top, um, about sort of being at the pinnacle, um, which very much ties into the into the mountain theme. Also, we are at the foot of the Santa Rita Hills, so you look out our back door at these beautiful, you know, in some places they would call them mountains. They're more hills in parts of California, but it's uh, it ties into both our, our location and sort of the, the theme of, of what we make. Very good. And as we mentioned in the last segment, you gotta get into Buellton, you gotta stop in the distillery, have a word with Steven and learn about the product that you're tasting. But Curtis also referenced brandy and you, we're gonna taste some two, uh, two new products in just a second, but you've got a, a brandy potential coming up. You've got something in the distant future that people can look forward to. Absolutely. Um, our next release will actually be gins. Uh, we've been working uh, dilig diligently on gins. I'm a real gin snob. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, because gin has so much variation and so many potential ingredients, uh, I really keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking because I want to get them just right. Um, do we dare um, give the listenership any foresight into what theme I'll you might be following? Are you going to be more juniper based? Are you going to be more citrus based? Are you going to be more botanical based? Um, actually, all three. We're going to release more than one gin. Oh. <laughs> um, Perfect. <by> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, because <laughs> gin is typically something that a distillery, from what I've seen on the shelves anyway, is going to be very limited offering. Right. You know, there's so many ingredients that could be involved. Like you said, a distillery is going to make one variation that they call their own mm -hmm. and move forward. You're going to release... Right. We're going to do um, one that's uh, very citrusy, uh, one that's more of a classic, uh, uh, sort of more in the English style, being a little more juniper forward, uh, and then also one that is all California botanical based. There you go. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for that one. We have... And then brandy afterwards. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, Bra brandy is uh, down in the barrels. Um, so we've done stuff uh, as long as we get uh, due to our location in sort of the real heart of Santa Barbara wine country. We get our hands on some uh, some good wine and we uh, distill it out and we've barreled it down. Even in its O to V state, uh, which is an unaged brandy state where it's still clear, um, stuff tastes <laughs> delicious. Uh, so that's already there. That's e what we've, we've... We haven't bottled that. You know, we just save a little bit for the library um, you know taste it occasionally uh, but the everything else we've barreled down and used breaker barrels and it's aging away and I did a little sort of test because uh, we um, we season up some small barrels for bar and restaurant programs so they can do barrel aged cocktails and I put some uh, <coughs> some Viognier brandy that we had left over that wouldn't fit in the big barrels into a small barrel and it's tasting phenomenal so Thinking through that, one, for selfish reasons, and two, just to understand the process, do you have set tasting panels, like with friends or something, where you've got this little barrel and you're trying out things that are in progress? And if so, how do we get in that group? 
<laughs> um, you got to come to Buellton, typically. Um, but usually, yeah, it's whoever. I'll tell you, it's people whoever are coming through who are, um, who are people that I think I have real respect for their palates and stuff. Um, so there's no real defined small group. So um, it's not like people that um, you typically hang out and have pizza with that are obligated to give you great praise so that they can get more bottles. This may be a stranger on a tour that if you're in a good mood, you're like, hey, you want to try something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, you know. We've uh, got to be on that tour, Curtis. Or, or we have a, um, you know, like today I had a great customer coming through from uh, um, a little north of Curtis's homeland from uh, North Dakota, and he's a big gin fan. And I was like, hey, why don't you try a couple of these experimental gins that I'm working on? Um, so uh, it's it's sort of luck of the draw sometimes. All right. You gotta, you gotta impress me though, if you want the special sauce. Well, we're gonna have to work a little harder than Curtis. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jason, Jason will impress <laughs> for the special sauce. <laughs> 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 well, damn. Wait, Wait a second. Dance. What happened? The, bo- the, the booze happened? are kicking in right. for this guy over here. You know, the 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 timer just went off, and we did, uh, we hit a whole bunch of great stuff in that segment. So before we go to the two vodkas that we've got, I think maybe let's take a break. It looks like you still have some pink stuff in your glass, and I know you don't want to mix those two together. No, I, I so gotta slurp, I gotta slurp we this down. We should get some fresh glasses. We'll, 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 fresh f- we'll, we'll flush these out, and then we'll get uh, we'll go to these two tasters. We'll do side by side, basically, and and we'll see where the the caviar lime takes us, and where the hot what, what am I the ghost, ghost the ghost chili ghost chili. Oh man, this is gonna be yeah. hot. Oh yeah. <laughs> This is going to be a he's fantastic he's reaction. Wag- to he's waggling his eyebrows, so he yeah. knows that we're in for a treat here. Well, not only does he know that we're in for a treat, but I know that this is going to be beautiful podcast reaction. And you should stay tuned because Curtis is not typically a hot guy. No. Not in that spectrum of heat. No, not that heat. That's not what the ladies say. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we better the close the out. The ladies <laughs> love my heat. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the heater. You have just Ricky. heard an inappropriate statement from Stephen Kurtman. <laughs> President and there's, Master there's nothing I- there's nothing inappropriate about it. It is all factual. I, th- I didn't oh think that yeah. was inappropriate at all. <laughs> right, <laughs> ladies, if you want the heat, you come on over my way. <laughs> Gender people ask for that to be edited. That's right. <laughs> that <laughs> will be cut out. And just so you know, my wife likes my heat. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna come back with Stephen Gurman from Ascendant Spirits in just a few minutes. And this has been Happy Hour with Joby and Curtis with Jason sitting in. Whoop whoop. And we'll see, catch you in a couple minutes. Yeah, baby. Bring on the heater. Hey, thanks for listening to Happy Hour with Joby and Curtis. If you like this podcast, make sure you like us on iTunes. You can also find us on Facebook under Happy Hour with Joby and Curtis. Give us a like and share it with all your friends. We'd appreciate it. Cheers.